This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today, we are going to be going over how to counterbore a post for precision key fitting. We also have a hashtag for today. You're going to take this hashtag, let me show you, post counterbore. Put that in the comments below. That's going to... <laughs> <laughs> That's going to give you 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023. We have several of them. We've got one on January 19th for soldering and cleanup. We're going to go over a couple different types of soldering on February 15th. February 15th, folks. That's going to be saxophone key fitting. That's going to be the topic that we're going to be partially covering today. This is a portion of that course, a little bit of teaser, if you will. And then we also have some uh, in-person courses on February 20 and 23. So take that post counter bore hashtag, put it in the comments below, whether you're watching this live, whether you watch this later in the week, next week, we're going to draw the winner for 15% uh, off. And the winner from last week is Nevin Alasta. Nevin, congratulations. Send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H at musicmedic.com, and we will get you your discount code. Now we also have along with courses. We are going to be hitting the road. We have a Neopads World Tour coming up, and this weekend we're going to be in Arlington, Texas at the Center for Visual and Performing Arts, as well as in Denton, Texas for a national uh, NAPERT Regional Clinic. The national's at the end of April, uh, and that's going to be uh, with Ann McMillan. She is a tremendous repair person and a, uh, an alum and she was also a professor at, uh, at UT mm -hmm. and uh, UNT. 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 Yeah, yeah UNT. And uh, you don't have to be a member of NAPR to go to a regional clinic. You just have to register, and there's a fee, but there's going to be a small fee. Great, great, yeah, small fee and great clinicians. Very good clinicians. Very good clinicians. Uh, we have uh, a, a excellent flute tech, excellent brass tech, excellent clarinet tech, and, of course, uh, sax pro shop guys, yeah. uh, Kurt and Ryan, are going to be there. So... Check Napper.org under the events section if you're interested and if you're in the Texas area. I know there's people from Oklahoma. And They're all over. Wisconsin guys are, are driving, coming down. Driving, coming down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so take a trip out to uh, Denton, but we're also going to be, uh, if I can get back to that, uh, how do I do this? Uh, we got we got technical difficulties yeah, like here. Any, uh, what's our, yeah, my goodness. Are we? <laughs> and we're stuck. <laughs> we're back to us. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, let's see. Can I get back to it? Uh, oh, oh no. Did I just do that? Oh, no, oh, we're good. There we go. We're good. Uh, so we're also going to be in these other regions, Georgia, Minnesota, Sioux City, Iowa, and out in Renton, Washington. So, uh, folks, if you are interested in having a meet and greet, these are the places we're going to be coming up. And that's going to do it for me. Nevin, make sure you get up with me. Uh, Ryan, we are going to dive in to post-counter boring uh, because we have our February 15th Sorry, that's course diving. Back, feet first. Let's get into it. Tell us uh, a little bit of the background information, the scenario in which you yes. would counter bore a post. Sure, definitely. Um, you would counter bore a post when you have looseness in a pivot key. Okay, if you, if you joined us a few weeks ago, we talked about reaming, uh, and there were some questions that we had afterwards. You know, what, when would you ever ream? Why would the key bind? You know, you shouldn't have to ream. It would be a post thing. Um, we should have done this first. We should have done counter boring first mm -hmm. and then pivot screw reaming because that's when you're doing key fitting and if you sign up for the key fitting course that's right february 15th yes february 15th. um you will learn more this is going to be a very small slice of saxophone key fitting so there might be stuff that you're gonna be like well he didn't talk about this and he didn't talk about this i know um sign up for the key course uh i'll go over all this there's a lot to, to really think about um but we should have done the counter boring first and then the reaming so counter boring um, like I said, it has to do with um, loose, a loose key. And what we're doing is we're dealing with the actual post. And it has to be a particular type of pivot screw system on a particular type of horn. Okay? What I have here in this example is a Mark VI. Okay? It works on Mark VI's, uh, current professional Yamaha's, Kyle Worth. Um, it works on Selmer's, but uh, like I said, Mark VI's, Mark VII's, and Series 1's of the Super Action 80's. Not the Series 2, not the Series 3, and not the Supreme. That's a different pivot screw system. Um, but it has to do with what I'm calling the true tapered system, which here is your post, here is your pivot screw, 
The true tapered system, it, it has to do with the key, the end of the key has to have a corresponding hole that matches the shape of the pivot screw. Some of these import horns nowadays coming from overseas, they, the post looks the same, but the end of this does not have this corresponding hole. It actually has more of a cylindrical hole like that. This will not work on this system. Okay, counterboring your post will not work on that type of pivot screw system. It has to be a true tapered system. And what we're doing is we're dealing with the inside of the post here. If I were to do a cutaway, it would look something like this. When we counter bore our posts, we are actually removing metal from the inside right here and right here. And when we counter bore, that actually causes that pivot screw when we fully tighten it to actually stick out just a little bit further. Right, let me show you an ex actual example. So we have here on this Mark VI, this G-sharp key, very wiggly back and forth, okay? You, can, you might be able to hear it if I get close enough with the microphone, but um, so this key right here is loose. Now I will mention very briefly, there's other stuff you wanna check first, body straightness, post alignment, all that. Yes, I know. You're not gonna go in and just start counterboring posts when you have something, a key like this, that's a little bit loose. You would check other things out and then you would do your counterboard. And we've got some videos on that background we information as well as the True Taper system. I'll put a link to it below after we awesome uh, later today. Thank you, Rich. So uh, let's talk very briefly about the tools that we're going to need. You can see some of them I had laid out here. Typical things like a screwdriver or a spring hook. If you do need to do some post alignment, this is my preferred method. So if I am putting a post, pushing a post closer, this is how I will do it with my little knocker and a rawhide mallet. Um, you have things to clean out the post after we counter bore. Okay, we could have little brass shavings, so pipe cleaner to clean it out, obviously oiling and greasing it up afterwards. And then if you have a caliper, it makes it very easy. So we're dealing with this G-sharp lever right here. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out, take off the key, take out the pivot screws. Neopad cam. Neopad cam. <laughs> there it is. That's our Neopad cam. We forgot to mention it last time. That's true. But we got it this time. So yes, our Neopads. Some of our viewers have asked, Ryan, if uh, how many times we've tested the Neopads before we started playing them. And it was millions of times. So millions. we're gonna do yep. millions and millions, five millions. million, five billion more wax. Yeah, we, yeah right. we got a we got a goal of five million wax. So we're already up to three. We just need two more. Two more. Three more. plus two equals, boom, five. Five million. So, okay, so you've got the key off. Got the key off. The first thing I'm going to have to do is I need to select, ah, the most important tool really is this guy right here. You have to have something that will actually do counter boring for you. And if you have Music Medic's ultimate post counter bore set, it'll do that. And you can see all the different sized cutters. Let me show you the sizes that they're all neatly labeled. You may ask, hey, where's that 157? There it is, right there. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. okay. Thank so, you. but you can see all the diameters. Um, so, the first thing we're going to need to do before we uh, just start randomly counterboring is we're going to need to measure the head of the pivot screw, and this will tell me what size cutter that I will be needing. So I'm going to measure this, and this is coming out. I don't know if you can see it upside down. Turn your computer screens upside down. Point one five seven. Okay, one five seven five. Well, Rich, looking at these numbers, which one do you think I would pick? 157. Look at that. It's almost like whoever designed these guys must took that to account. Did some homework there. So, but there it is right there. This is my 0.157, okay, which has the same diameter as the head of my pivot screw. There it is. Okay. I have a couple different ways I can actually use this. To cut, I, I'm just for right now. I'm just going to use my straight driver here. I'm going to thread it on, like so. Okay, and I'm going to. These are my two posts right here, for my G sharp, my top post, and then my bottom post. Okay, I'm going to make sure when I do my counter boring, that I keep everything in line. You don't want to counter bore like this. You don't want to counter bore like this. Okay. All right. So you want to make sure that it's in line like that. Okay. All I'm going to do is just hold this and then just turn. And the cutting direction is as if you were tightening a screw. So technical term would be righty tighty. Thank you. So a couple quick turns and let me show you 
I didn't take a lot, okay? Just, just a little bit. There, there is some brass dust there, okay? It's best, there it is. Uh, best to take a little bit, put it back in, chuck it. If it still needs a little bit more counter boring, you would go back. And this, you may need to do a little bit of both, both sides, okay? Right. And again, if you sign up the key fitting course, I'll show you some diagnosing uh, tips and tricks on deciding which side to first off counter bore and what side, if you do, you know, something else happens, uh, what side to ream as well. Now, what about those pipe cleaners? Uh, pipe cleaners? Ah, oh, great. Thank you for mentioning these. So, again, I'm cutting the inside of this post because we could have some brass chips and brass dust. So, what I'll, a lot of times do is after I do a little bit of counter boring, before I assemble, even before I put the pivot screw in, I will take a, a pipe cleaner and I will just work that in and clean off, make sure there's no brass shavings in there. Okay. Because that could, could cause that screw to bind in there uh, and it could damage your internal threads. Um, Let's say for whatever reason that I, I can't really keep the, the cutter perpendicular or, or parallel with it. I, I have to do it like this. Um, I can use this little extension. You can see it's a flexible extension that allows me to get around corners. I would screw this onto the end of my driver. And then I would screw my cutter onto the end of the extension. Okay. Back to the Neopad cam. There it is, still going. Wish we had a counter, like a, like a timer. Uh, we could actually... But we're actually doing it by uh, two, two, two whacks a second. Yes, yes. We're doing the math. We doing the math. Calculating it's... things. That's right. So, as you can see, I've got my cutter screwed onto the end of my flexible extension, which is, again, screwed onto the end of my driver. And what this allows me to do is keeping this cutter in alignment, but now I can hold here and now... I can move. So Ryan, my if, you get, if you have a tough drive. to reach area, you want to use a drive bar. So if you're doing some bass clarinet, which has kind of you know lower post yes, to yep. the body, yep. maybe hard to get the driver or the acorn drivers that we have that we'll be talking mm -hmm. about in a second. Yep. Uh, that's going to be good for that. Very cool. Absolutely. So now, there you go. Show us the the acorn, acorn drivers. drivers. So you notice yeah. these two guys right here. We're calling our acorn drivers, and we both have a large and a small. Let me show you the large one real quick. These are really nice. It doesn't screw in you'll notice the back of the cutter is hex and that slips right into there like so uh, this little guy spins it's actually held together by a magnet look at that okay and what i can do here is this allows me to now just pinch so you can see i can just pinch like so and now just turn that knurled part and now i'm doing everything so i don't have this where it's not at this weird angle you know, facing this way or that way. Uh, it makes it very easy, and it's very easy to just grab and then twist. Now, Ryan, I see there's a smaller one, and yeah. and, and how do you use, why, why is there a smaller one? Why right a small there? one? Uh, well, it's for people with dainty hands. There no, I'm right. kidding, it's not. It actually is for a very particular instance where you may have to counter bore, okay? And I actually have the horn right here, this Selmer Mark VI. Very nice. Okay, and this, small one was specifically designed for one area which is this guy right down here this is our c-sharp lever you can see it comes down there and we have a post right here it's a pivot screw and it's tucked all the way in this kind of curve of this inside bow okay if you ever need to do any kind of counter boring uh with that post a lot of times what you end up having to do is remove this band and, and remove the the bell and the bow uh, yeah the bell and the bow from the body tube so you can get it to it much easier um, that can kind of be a pain uh, because sometimes these guys are soldered together. Okay? Mm. Even then, you're still taking this apart. You're taking this off. You're taking keys off. It's much, much easier if you just use the small acorn cutter. So I'm going to take my cutter. It fits in like so. And you can see if I butt this right up next to it. There it is right there. And you can see that gives me plenty of clearance to turn that little cutter. And I can counter bore the bottom post of a C-sharp lever on a Mark VI. Very that cool. works for Alto N10. Very okay. cool. Really, any horn that has this. So um, I believe Selmer's, the uh, S80 Series 1, had this kind of same design. You can use it on that. Mm -hmm. Yamaha, you can use it on that. Very cool. Okay. Very cool. That's a huge timer time saver. Especially if that bell is soldered on. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, Ryan, I do have a question for you. What happens if you counter bore a little too much? Ah, yes. It'll... And this is very common. Again, I go over this with the key pitting course on February 15th. 
Um, if you happen to counterbore too much, what it will then cause is in some binding in the key. Okay, we went from it being loose, it's kind of wiggling back and forth between posts. You counterbore so that that post or that pivot screw sticks out a little bit further. What you could cause is some binding. So, what you would then do is you would go to your pivot screw reamers, there they are, right there. You would select whatever size is matches the taper of the point of the pivot screw, and you would get in and you're actually then reaming out the end of the key to free it up. All right. Uh, now, again, this is why it's very important. There's other stuff to think about. OK, like I said, I will do, I will go over all these little variables like, you know, post alignment, body straightening, this, that and the other thing. Um, so you want to be very careful when you're removing metal. When you're counterboring a post, you're removing metal. When you're uh, reaming the ends of the keys, you're removing metal. OK, so you want to be just very uh, judicious mm. in your decision to do that. Now, we're on some. Uh, I, I, I was going to ask a question, and I just brain fart. Uh, right. Does the end of the hinge tube have to butt up against the post? I know when we see a horn from the factory, we see that a lot. But oftentimes, mm -hmm. there are gaps in vintage horns. Great question. When you're counterboring, what's the deal? What's the uh, deal with that? All right. Um, just so everybody is all on the same page, and I think what you're referring to is, so here's our post. Here's our pivot screw. Okay. Here's our key. When it's assembled, it's usually butted up right against that, or at least close to it. That contoured cut on the inside matches. What you are referring to is this tiny little gap right there. Okay. And you'll see it every once in a while on horns, even horns that fit well. Okay. Um, the function of this is when it rides, it's actually riding here and here. All right. It's not actually, this key doesn't actually butt up against that uh, face of the post. It actually doesn't even touch the tip on the inside. It's just the edges here, and that's what's allowing it to be free and move. Okay. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll fit, in, fit it and everything will be nice and tight, and you'll still see just a very tiny gap. Okay. And this is where I may open a whole can of worms here. You guys are opinionated about this, and I will say, my own personal opinion is a very small gap, not that big of a deal. Yeah. If it's something that's a little bit bigger, maybe it's a little bit more unsightly. Uh, what may happen is you may get dirt and fuzz and grit and grime that goes in there and then causes, you know, things to happen. Um, but it doesn't ride on the face of that post. Okay. okay. So that is, that is one thing. So if you do have something, it is possible to correct that. That is something that I do address in the key fitting course. Um, but it involves just to get rid of this space, a lot of work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to get rid of that visual space. Remember, this is what you're thriving on. Okay. Okay. Not so, here. So Ryan, we're talking about doing this all on saxophones. Can we also do this procedure on flute or clarinet or any other woodwinds? Yes. Any woodwind instrument that has, that makes use of a headed pivot screw. And that's what these are right here. So if I make a cutaway of this, again, it looks something like this. It has to have this counterboard area that the bottom of that head of the pivot screw will actually stop. And that's what determines how far that point sticks out. If I drop this even lower, it goes screws in further, which means this post comes out. Or sorry, this po point comes out. Um, so any other system, flutes that have this system that use a headed pivot screw, it will work. Clarinets, it will also work. And you can see all of the different sizes that we've included. Uh, so a lot of these smaller sizes will work for clarinet and flute. Okay? Yes. A lot of these bigger sizes are for saxophone, you know, bass clarinet, bassoon. Very cool. Okay. So it will work um, on other instruments. Excellent. There you go. Well, Ryan. Very concise. <laughs> Over. Cut. Thank you so much for that excellent demonstration. If you have any questions about this or any other procedure that we talk in our Wednesday Wisdoms, please feel free to put it in the comments below or reach us at musicmedic.com. Also, make sure that you put the hashtag postcounterbore in the comments below. That's going to enter you into a drawing for 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up, including the precision key fitting course uh, day course on February 15th. That is going to be via Zoom. So if you are anywhere in the world, uh, you can take that course and have a good time with Ryan. We're going to be back next week with alternatives to court. We're going to show you some different materials for key regulation and uh, that's going to do it for now. So uh, I think until next time, happy repairing.